From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. We trust that you were able to see the program last week. Certainly it's centered around many of the things that are happening in Israel because that is where Jesus was crucified and rose again. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to be centering this program, as Jack said, around the nation of Israel once again. So much is happening over there. It's in the headlines every single day. We need to find out exactly how it, um, what it means according to the Bible. Take a look, please, at this. Jerusalem. Jerusalem means city of peace. I did not realize that. <laughs> oh, I love it. Or foundation of peace. But the history of Jerusalem is one of war and destruction. You know, the sounds of battle and the clashes of arms have been heard in Jerusalem throughout the centuries. Do you see that man? gripping the other men they are captives and being tortured there oh my oh my I trust that your prayers will be with them as they go through these times but I have a question God loves Israel his son was born in Israel the Israelis and the Jewish people wrote the Bible except for two books God loves Israel and I want to ask Jack a simple question maybe going through your mind why are they so hated? They're brilliant people. Einstein, the scientists, out of there came uh, with so many things that the world needed. Jack, why is Israel so hated? First Chronicles 21.1, Satan, the slimy devil, the one who walks about doing all the damage he can to human beings on earth hates the Jew. He stood up against the Jew. Israel, 1 Chronicles 21.1. Now I'm going to tell you something. This is going to end. I've got a God who loves the Jew as well as his son Jesus and the Holy Spirit. A great love there. And you're going to be shocked before I get through with this message. I love the Jew. And you Palestinians who call yourselves Christians hate the Jew. God forgive you. You're going against God and you're sinning. And all you other groups, the Muslims, the people of the world hating the Jew is coming and God will deal with you for it. God loves the Jew. Listen to what he has to say. Israel, I did not choose you because you were more in people than anyone else. You were the fewest. But I, God, loved you. No doubt about it. Listen to him. Now, he talks like a man who's in love with a woman, and he's a sexless being, but he just is trying to show you how much he does love him. He says, Israel is the apple of my eye. Right. Oh, I adore her. Right. He said, Israel is my betrothed, my fiance. Wait, Israel is my wife. And you know how long I'm going to have her? I will give Israel an everlasting name, no matter how many wars they have, no matter how much they kill him. I'm going to give her everlasting name, and that name is Israel. And her world headquarters will be in Jerusalem soon. When I return, it'll be there forever and forever and forever and forever. And you're going to see that four weeks from now. Oh, the fourth program of this text. Now, let me show you something here. This is my own book, and this is on Jerusalem. David took the city. Fortress was on a hill called Zion, another name given Jerusalem. Since B.C. 400, you talk about hatred. From 70 A.D., the transition of power went from the Roman conquerors in 614 to the Persians. In 637, was to Caliph Omar. 1099, the Crusaders. 1187, the Saladin. In 1250, the Egyptian Mamelukes. 1517, the Turks. In 1917, the British. And finally, in 1967, the Jews captured Jerusalem. We're at home 
for thousands of years, but it's all going to change. Listen to me. The greatest revival in history is coming. Millions are going to get saved because of the Jews. Jesus said, salvation is of the Jews. If you don't believe anything else, believe Jesus. He doesn't lie. And he so loved the Jews when God said, I love them. And we have to produce a way of salvation for the Jews and all the world. Who will go? Jesus said, I'll go. And God said, I'm going to put you into a Jewish womb because I love the Jews. And so the Holy Spirit, as I said last week, performed a miracle. He placed that body of Christ. It was a sexless act because they were all spirits. But only one is called the Word, John 1, 1, because Christ was the Word who was going to become the leader of the Jews and the communicator with all people of the world. That's why he's called the Word. Now, I want you to get this very carefully. When he's in the womb of Virgin Mary, he says, I don't know a man. It's a miracle. It's creation, sexless. And it says, boy, this is precious. That baby in the womb of the Virgin Mary was called, changed from the word to Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. Second member of the Trinity. He was in that womb for nine months. He came out. He preached for 30 years. And as I preached last week, he came to, into the world for one reason, to die for sinners. And you heard me say all oh, last week, I gave my back to the smiters. I gave my cheeks to them that plucked out the hair. And I battered my face. He said, I gave my body. Oh, he said, they put the Roman cat of nine tails on me. 39 lashes. And as the cords entwined my body, the pieces of metal tore my flesh. As they beat my face, the blood flowed. They laid me at a cross and hammered me to it. And I said last week, I repeat, 804 times. The Bible says 400 times. Jesus is the only way. And 404 times. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. 404 times, God says, the blood of your lust forever. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. But that's why the Jew is hated. Whatever God loves, Satan hates. And when it is, that slimy beggar is going to be in the pit of hell himself. <clears throat> Watch it. He's coming. And God's going to take care of that devil. Amen, that's for sure. Well, you know, something, I, I want to go on with some headlines here because something does hurt my heart because many of those who hate Israel, uh, the Jewish people, are of another religion. It's over religion, not because of who they are, but over religion. I'd like you to take a look, please, at this. Syrian activists, Muslim world manipulates Islam to incite against Israel. You get that? It's our religious, religious duty to fight the Jews. Get that? Again, Islamic Jihad, war with Israel likely this year. Now that's an Islamic I'll be dealing jihad. with that in a few minutes. Yes. Crowds chant death to Israel as Iran marks 40 years since Islamic revolution. Now you see that they had a, a revolution, a religious revolution. And that's when it really began to be activated, death to Israel. And then again, the Palestinian cleric says, Allah turned Jews into apes and pigs. Now what puzzles me, the Palestinians are supposed to be Christians, and they should be loving the Jews. That really disturbed me. But Jack, religions are involved in this because uh, the Jewish people have their religion, and they resent it. They, they hate the Jew. Is that not true? Religion oh, yeah. is involved. I said in a recent comment, God loved the Jew. Jesus' salvation is of the Jews. Now, what did he mean? Everything that we have, even this Bible, was written by Jews, as I said last week. 
Holy Spirit came upon the men of old and they wrote this book. Who were they? 39 in the Old Testament were Jews. Every book, read the names, Jewish names. Then the New Testament came. Oh, now we got Christianity. 11 of the 12 apostles were Jews. That's right. And they wrote the rest of the books. 66 books here, 64 written by Jews. God loves the Jews. And you're not going to get to heaven if you don't. They wrote the Ten Commandments. And God breathed upon them to write it. And I said, the Trinity always works together. And the first commandment is this. You shall have no other gods before you. You shall not make any graven image of anything that even resents presents a God. Finished. You shall not take the name of the Lord God in vain. I will not hold you guiltless if you take God's name in vain. And that's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And here are all these cults in the world. He says, no other gods. So every religion that is not Judeo or Christian is of the devil. There are 57 Muslim groups, and they all hate Jesus. You want to know what they got in the Quran eight times? Eight times. Anyone who worshiped this Jew, Jesus, will burn in hell forever. Muslims. And that's the religion. You think they're going to be in heaven? Come on. Now, here's worse. We have ten wonderful commandments to live godly life. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. Love of money. Materialism. Here are there four commandments. Number one, you kill your daughter if she has marital sex. Number two, you kill all homosexuals. Number three, you kill, are you getting this now? Anyone who is not a Muslim. Think of it. And they've slaughtered millions. Right now, they're getting ready and they are leading it as well as a few other groups. 50 different nations are getting ready to slaughter Christians across the world, led by Islam. Islam phobia, they call it. That's the latest newspapers. I can prove everything I'm saying. Now, wait a minute. After all this killing, my Bible says, here are the people who are in hell. hell. The fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murders, the Lord adulterers and all liars, murderers. Hell! Gehenna where the fires go 24 hours a day forever, forever, forever. Now, that's not what they teach. No, get ready for the shock of a lifetime. If you do all this killing, God, Allah, warn, uh, warns you with 72 virgins to make a whorehouse out of heaven for all eternity. That's what they believe. And I got good news now. I heard that many Muslims are beginning to change. They said, we're sick of this murder. We're sick of these lies. We're sick of adultery. And they're starting to come to Christ. That's you know, going to make it worse for the Jewish people. I love Jew. There are 25 groups in America now and Canada called Jews for Jesus. I recently wrote them. I said, I love the Jews, and from now on, I'm going to back you people on television from coast to coast. I'm now the largest thing that's ever happened in the history of Christianity. I'm on 817 stations, and I reach 7 billion, 600 million. That's the potential. And I'm going to praise God for the Jews, for Jesus. If there's one in your area, you don't know where to go to church, find them. They're going to be so rewarded when they see Jesus because they brought the people he loves to Christ. Now, let me show you love. The Apostle Paul's a Jew. I said every writer 
but one Luke wrote this book. 66 books, 64 written by Jews. Paul could say that it, the gospel should be preached to the Jew first. Why? Because they started everything. A Jewish virgin bore the Son of God. It's all Judaism. And that's why Satan has done everything he can to try to destroy and kill every one of them. He's going to continue. The greatest war in history is coming. We'll talk about it soon. World War III. Ah, millions are going to die. Mm. But I'm going to tell you something. God is going to protect his people. And four weeks from now, I'm going to give you the greatest message you've ever heard. And that's that. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to return to earth, and he's coming soon. The Holy Spirit said to me, from now on, you've been anointed to be the final day prophet, and you are to preach the imminent return of Jesus to set up the kingdom of heaven on earth, and that kingdom will be the Judeo-Christian new world order Amen. and religion. Amen. <laughs> like it or not. See, I don't believe that. I'm going to be proving it two weeks from now. The fourth week, mm. fourth message. Man, millions, millions living there, all born again Christians. The judgment Day will have happened, and those who've been waiting in Hades because they had rejected Christ are now transferred to Gehenna, the final penitentiary. They have no more chance. But those that are still alive, I said, Oh God, is there no hope? Yeah. I found out that during the millennium, all the Jews who return with Christ from heaven, who've been saved, who on the resurrection day, he went to receive them from that terrible place, led captivity captive to heaven. They come back, 144,000, and they go to every person in the world. And the greatest revival the world's ever seen takes place as millions get saved. And it gets so wonderful after this great war, which the world loses and Israel wins, that God says, I'm setting up my eternal heaven. I'm going to change it from heaven to earth. And he does. Amen. And you know, Jesus said, I'm going to go prepare a place. He's been building a holy city up there. Get ready for a thrill. It's 1,500 miles wide, long, and high. He said, can take care of millions of mansions because of it. And it's going to come down from heaven and it's going to hang over the old city of Jerusalem. That's Revelation 21, verse 2. Now, get it. You know what's got on it? The holy city, the new Jerusalem. Oh, not Rome, Jerusalem. That's how much God the Father, the God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit love the Jew. And that's about to happen. And the two weeks from now, man, I'm going to give you a message that'll make you tingle with thrilling feelings if you're a born again Christian, because you're going to be part of it. And when we get there, we will never die again. The rapture will have occurred. The resurrection of the dead will have happened. And he will give us the crown of life, saying, I promise you eternal life. It starts now. As we go back to Jerusalem, you will live there forever and forever and forever. Rick Stella, would, would you quote the Lord's Prayer, please? Yes, I will, Jack, but you know what? That was some message. Yeah. It really, really was. Uh, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. How true and it is. that's in Jerusalem. Yeah. Thy kingdom will come. Heaven's going to be transferred to earth forever. And he says, it's going to be the Father's kingdom. Christ is going to be the power, is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He runs it because he's the one I called the word last week, John 1 1, because he's the communicator, only one. But the Holy Spirit does something, he's the motivator. 
Thy kingdom come. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory belongs to the Holy Spirit. What does he do? He is the one that creates the ninefold fruit of the Spirit. Oh, you want to hear this two weeks from now. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. The Holy Spirit's nine fruits will fill every commandment there is. Oh, what a time it's going to be forever and forever and forever and forever. Why, eternal life has taken place at the rapture, given to us as we return back to live here for the ages of age. You'll never die again. When we arrive back on earth, here's what Jesus says to those here. Don't worry. I knew the second death, hell, has no control. You will live forever and forever. That's eternal. Amen. <laughs> You know, Jack, that is a wonderful message. It really, really is. And friends, I have all these headlines uh, talking about what's happening in Israel right now. Now, Jack is sort of skipped ahead there about the coming of the Lord and how he's going to set up his kingdom there. But right now, they're having so many problems. This is the last effort of the world to try to strike, yes, and you're going to all lose. Well, I'm going to just very, very quickly see how many of these headlines I can get in to kind of enlighten you. All right. Iran threatens Israel with Inferno vows to improve missile accuracy. Again, we are prepared to eliminate Israel. Iranian commander threatens Israel with annihilation. Iranian commander, we can defeat Israel in three days. Bunk. Iran hits Israel with cyber attacks on a daily basis. Missiles from Gaza and Lebanon are ready to be fired at Israel. In Yemen's chaos, jihadists and Iran are getting hold of U.S. weapons. They're stealing our weapons. Here you see it. Satellite photos show Iranian Missile Depot, and that is a storage place for military supplies allegedly leveled at Israeli strike. Going on, Russia accuses Israel of gross violation of Syrian sovereignty. And Beijing runs unannounced South China Sea military. They are building up to. Here, this is it. The threat of nuclear war is still with it's us. It's going to happen. Israel, U.S. military complete that missile defense drills. Well, we're, there on, we're on their side, as you well know. I'm going back to Jack just very, very quickly, friends. Okay. It is so very important that when we see it all happening, what the Bible said would happen, we need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Don't we, Jack? Oh, Rex Ellis, Satan's going to take one more attempt because he hates the Jew. But Jesus coming back to save the Jew because he loves him. And our blessed American, the English-speaking people, are going to stand with the Lord and his crowd. Now, what about the others? Ezekiel 38, Gog, Magog, that's Russia is going to lead the whole thing. Uh, the Oriental nations are going to join them in Revelation 16, 12. And then all the Muslim nations, 57 of them, joining in with them to get rid of the Jews. Going to be the biggest bloodshed in history, and it'll be atomic. Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 6, 6, 6 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, and on and on and on. And it's going to take seven months to bury the dead. And Israel will be victorious. And he'll set up his kingdom there two weeks from now, forever, forever, forever. He says, I'm going to give Israel an everlasting name. Israel, headquarters, Jerusalem. Okay, Jack. Well, we, I asked Jack a question. We need to be looking for the coming of the Lord. Are you looking for the coming of the Lord? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? That's why we come into your home, so that you'll get forgiven of your sins, trusting in the blood, and ready for heaven. Will you pray this prayer with Jack, saying, Lord, it's all happening now. I want to be ready. Will you pray the prayer? Too? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Simple. Lord Jesus, I believe you are God's son. I believe you died for my sins, and you can cleanse me and save me forever. And I trust in you, Jesus. Come into my heart now. I receive you as my personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing for me. Amen. 
Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're ready. If you have Christ in your heart, you're ready. So please let me know if you pray with Jack. I'll send you absolutely free first steps in a new direction. The Lord will walk with you and you're ready for heaven. God bless you as you walk with him. Our mailing address is Jack Benibby Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Remember to ask for your free copy of the booklet, First Steps, when you write. Our address, once again, is Jack Penipi Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. You'll be glad you did. Now, our offer of the week, Enemies of the Cross. You know, we are having a lot of apostasy these days. Churches aren't preaching on the cross anymore. So many are turning away from it. We can just live good lives and go to heaven. Oh, no. You need to have this to study a little bit more about what the cross really means. It is the way to heaven. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive Enemies of the Cross. Hey, who's calling the cross useless? It's all in here. Jack explains it very well. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. Oh, my friend, to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA 6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And I just want to say that you do not want to miss having this video in your home. Who is calling the cross useless? I said that before. How can we know if Jesus is the only way? I said that before. What will the final one world religion look like? Hey, a one world religion is coming and Jack explains it so very, very well on here. Well, I'll tell you, how are the Bible translators destroying some of the Christian faith? Oh my, where will the false prophet come from? All on here explains so very, very well. So make the call or write to us. We'll get this in the mail. You need to have it because certainly we're living in an evil age in many areas. You know, friends, we love to come into your home. I enjoy leaving a good thought with you before we say goodbye. Christ showed us his love by dying for us. We show our love by living for him. Amen. Wow. You? Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye. The preceding program was sponsored by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.